I know, I know, everyone was yelling, we really enjoyed that attenuator series, so why don't you do another one? <laughs> well, maybe not. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, I do have another one I want to take a look at. Uh, this one's a bit different. This one's also a 355, but it's the F version, not the A version. And it's good to a gigahertz instead of 500 megahertz. It'll be interesting to see what different uh, what difference they put inside to get that extra uh, uh, extra 500 megahertz there. Uh, it does have the old logo still. Uh, it does have a a new uh, serial number that's uh, riveted on, so that's uh, that's different. It's a BNC BNC. These BNCs are in better shape. Uh, the bottom has more screws. Oh boy, <laughs> more screws. And uh, one of the feet is missing, and I put a rubber, a rubber bumper on it, so at least it sits. Um, but the interesting thing about this one is the knob. There is no knob. Uh, it is electrically uh, programmable. Uh, I don't think I have a plug for that style connector. Um, and I assume there's probably solenoids inside, and you energize the solenoids, so... Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, I at least want to take a look inside and see if we can't operate it manually, see if it still works. There we go. Solenoids. Oh, somebody wrote on this. 50, 10, 20, and 30. Uh, so that's uh, that's like the other one. The other one, remember, was 5, 1, 2, and 3. This one's 50, 10, 20, and 30. So this one is uh, probably 120 dB, uh, not 12 dB. Um, so these are the individual um, individual solenoids. Oh. oh, and I can push on them. I hear them click. So we can just... Uh, we can just push on them and see if they... See if they work or not. Let's see if the 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 other these plungers come out. So be careful about the plungers. Here's the uh, here's the plunger. It's got a little uh, thing that pokes down. So yeah, I don't want to turn it upside down. Those will fall out. But I can push on them. So let's see if this one works. Might not have to do a tear down. Might not have to do a repair. I'll just do a quick check here. Let's see what did we have yesterday. Uh, this is the input. And I guess it doesn't matter what side we use. They should be the same. Put this one over here. Let's put the put this cable in the back so you can I'll get it all on camera here. Sorry about the camera work. Okay, one volt. Push the 50. And it's, oh, 50 dB. Oh, that's right, 50 dB is going to be really, really small. So 10 dB should be a, a little less than, a um, little less than, yeah, a quarter. So, yeah, so let's do some calculations and see if this thing works. Let's see. Uh, we go to 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.03, and... 0 0.001. Oh, yeah, really small. So I think we'll bump up to 10 volts uh, to run this thing. So let's do it. Let's do some calculations. Okay, this time we've got 0, 10, 20, 30, and 50. So my, uh, we can zoom out here. Uh, let's see, so my calculator should still have the program in it. So if we do 10, this should be 316, 20, should be 100, uh, 30, should be 31.6, and 50 should be, uh, wait a minute, 30. And 50 should be 
0.16. And if we multiply these all by, uh, by 10, then this should be 3, uh, 3, 1, mm, 0.3 and 0.03, I guess. So let's turn up the juice. Let's turn up to 10 volts. Eight, nine, let's get it up to something around 10. There we go. Perfect. Okay, 10. So the first one should be 3.16. Ooh, 3.16, very nice. The second one should be one volt. Very, very nice, look at that. This thing's really super accurate. And then uh, 0 0.316, 0 0.316, man, this thing is right on. And then 50 should be 0 0.0316, 0 0.0. Yeah, see, that one doesn't, that, uh, 0.01. Did I do the 50 right? 50 times, yeah, I did. So 50 seems to be out. Unless we just don't know how have, have enough headroom here, 50. 0 0.001. I don't understand why my calculations is funny here. 50 should be, oh, 50 should be the same as 20 and 30 together. So let's do 20 and 30 together. Yeah, 0 0.03, 316, so that's perfect. So the 50, the 50 seems to be wrong. Hmm. Oh no, not another repair. Uh, yeah, the 50 is wrong. So 10 is right. 20 is right. 30 is right. And if I push 10, uh, 20 and 30 together should, let's see, 20 and 30 together should be 50. And then 50 is not the same. 50, 60. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know about this. I think we have enough resolution. Hmm. Hmm. Let me uh, let me go up to twenty volts just to make sure we're not. I don't know what it would be, but just to make sure, just to make sure it behaves the same. So if behaving the same instead of point, point 0.01, we'll get point 0.02. And we do. Hmm. And we should be getting 20 and 30. Oh, that's interesting. Now it's not working at all. Oh, oh, now it's not working. Maybe this 50 is not working well. Wait a minute, where'd my 20 go? Oh, something happened. I'm getting zero volts out and uh, yeah, something happened. Let me disconnect this. Something happened. Huh. Oh, now my voltmeter is very unhappy. Something am I, uh... Oh, there we go. My, oh, that was weird. That was really weird. Let's try it again. Yeah, there's something shorted now. Not, not good. Let's turn down the voltage, current compliance. Yeah. Okay, something's sick with this thing. And I think it has to do with that 50. Um, but now it's a dead short somewhere. And that's not good. Let's, uh, Let's put on some probes here. Ohms. Uh, let's make sure it's measuring short. Oh, 
Hello? Oh, now my voltmeter's not working. What is going on? It's one of those days. Oh, there we go. Now my voltmeter's working. That was weird. Yeah, it's a short. Okay, let me disconnect the back here. And yeah, it's a short. So something shorted inside. Something's dead. All right. Well, guess what? <laughs> another tear down, another fix. Okay, this is what's inside the new revision. So the original one was built back in the late late 50s or early 60s. Uh, I found it in the 1961 calendar. I don't know if it was older than that or not. But this one is a newer version. So let's take a look to see what they did different. First of all, there's a uh, there's no longer separate pieces here. They are in, in, integral castings. So remember I had problems with the connection between these and the outside. There was a little, a little uh, brass shim that went between the two and they've gotten rid of that. Um, they've also put in silver plating. Um, they put in a lot more shielding. Um, it's still micro switches. And um, they went to a different um, resistor manufacturer, so these might be more high precision. So, how can we figure out where the short is? Hmm, that will be interesting. Uh, and how do you take this thing apart? Wow. This might be a lot more hard to work on than, than the other one. The other one, you could unbolt everything, but this one, this one you cannot. All right, let me, uh, let me probe around on it a bit and see if I can't figure out what's wrong with it. All right, uh, I put on the macro lens so you can see what's, uh, see what's going on here. Um, let me get something, something good to point with. Um, tweezers, I guess. So a BNC in comes in this white wire, goes to this switch, um, and then there's a bunch of switches along the way. So very similar, uh, but like I said, these these things here are now cast in, and the uh, resistors crimp in. There's this fancy little crimp mechanism here on each uh, on each of the Pi networks. And then there's a, a interesting thing going on here. Looks like there's an inductor uh, to ground at this point here. So I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe compensating it for one gigahertz. Um, so I was probing around. And so this is the input uh, input here. And, and from here to ground was 0.1 ohm. So something had shorted out. And um, I just by random started on this end. And... Uh, all of the center, all of the centers of the switches are are, are in good shape. So it, it, it's making connection when it's normally open. It's making connection to this thing here, and then there's a wire that goes across over to this one, and then it comes over here, and there's a wire and over here. Anyway, um, I noticed that there was. Uh, I think you can see that on camera. I'll make sure that it's focused the very very best. So there's like this little, like mouse bites. Something really weird here. Somebody, somebody bashed that over. If you take a look at this one, it's not bashed, and this one's not bashed, and that's one, but this one was bashed. So I, I grabbed it and I, I pulled it out of the way, uh, this direction, and then um, it still was a dead short. So there's a purple wire in there and I just kind of went in and I pried it away from here and it, the shirt went away. So all I can think of is that something happened here when it was manufactured or if somebody worked on it, I don't think somebody worked on it, but somehow there's a short, this, I don't know where the short is. Um, oh, I think I know where the short is now. I think I know. I don't really want to remove it, but so there's insulation here 
And then there's this little piece of Bakelite or plastic. I guess it's plastic as an orange plastic. And um, it holds things as, and then as, as it goes across. So you would think that they would keep the insulation all the way across because all it's doing is going across. But for some reason, there is, uh, the insulation is stripped back and there's bare, bare wire in there. And it seems to have been shorted and I moved it and it unshorted. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can take this out and go in there deeper. Go see what's going on. That just doesn't make any sense. I don't know what this, what this piece does. Let's take that. Take the screw. There we go. The whole assembly came out. That does look like, yeah, it does look funny. Oh, there's a washer down there. Oh, there's two washers down there. I guess those are spacers. Let me pull those out. Oh, what did I just do? I just, I just dropped the other washer away in there. Let me see if I can get it out. There we go. It came out. Good. Oh, and then there's something else in there. Oh. Ah. A little, little piece of, uh, Little piece of oh geez you can't see that can you I'm sorry so that came out a little metal shim ah it's really weird so it's kind of like a homemade capacitor or something was got weird going on there and it was right down here and I'm sure that's what was shorted out because you can see that wire there I think you can see that wire <laughs> you can see that wire there is like gold and um, it was right next to this thing. I think it's kind of like a controlled, controlled in a capacitor of some kind. Really weird. So I'm going to try to uh, try to assemble it back and um, make sure it doesn't short out next time. Okay, I solved the mystery. Um, when in doubt, read the manual. <laughs> uh, so we have a 355F, and um, the trick is it actually has a diagram, and it is not a 50 dB. So whoever wrote 50, Whoever wrote 50 inside this thing didn't know what they were doing. So obviously it was not from the factory because the factory would have known it was 60. So it's 60, 10, 20, 30. So that makes more sense. So the, the, so the device now is operating absolutely perfectly. It's a 60 D. Well, I wouldn't say perfectly. So anyway, as far as attenuation, it's 60, 10, 20. So it's operating good that way. So that funny little piece of metal that I showed you, that funny little gold little piece of metal is this. It's a leaf switch. It's really weird. Um, so the way that these work is you have a pad here, uh, the Pi network, and you either switch it in or switch it out, right? So that's the way these things work. So fine, here's another one, here's another one. Now the 50 dB pad is kind of weird. It's uh, a little bit bigger, it, it attenuates a little bit more, and it has some frequency compensation in the middle. So that thing I called an inductor is actually a capacitor. It's a little capacitor, and that's chosen at the factory to balance this thing out for SWR and uh, flatness and things like that. So that's that's put in here. Um, but the weird thing is, when you instead of having the uh, pad bypassed, it goes through this wire and out. Uh, it goes down here through the pad and out. Now, when it's in the pad, this leaf switch closes and shorts out this little piece of wire. So that's all that little thing does is it's meant to touch that wire. So that's why it looks so weird. That little flap gets pushed on and it does short to the wire because this is the wire and that's the little. So it's really, really weird. And I don't like this design. I know why they probably put it in there because they were getting some path around it at one gigahertz. They were having a hard time probably at one gigahertz and 
maybe this is a capacitance, a capacitively coupled path around the pad because it's a 50 dB pad. So this has to be isolated really, really well. So they said, ah, oh, we'll just ground that wire when we're not using it. But instead of using a good switch, they used kind of a makeshift switch. And unfortunately, if you push the switch really, really slowly, you can get this leaf switch to contact before it's moved to the other side. So it means that your signal gets grounded. It, it adds a ground path. So when, when we first took a look at it and the thing was, you know, not working right, it was actually shorted out. That's because this thing wasn't adjusted exactly right to have this close before this closes. So uh, yeah, I don't like this part of the design. I'm kind of tempted to just leave this out, but eh, it's working now. So I guess I'll leave it alone. Um, but that's what was going on there. Anyway, so I will take a magic marker and get rid of that 50 and make it a 60. So next time I won't be, uh, get be tricked into thinking it's a uh, 50. Anyway, uh, it's working great now.